charge for the Buffett rule, which makes sure that millionaires and billionaires don't get to pay a lower tax rate than hardworking middle class families. And President Obama is standing with having two sets of rules. And forward with President Obama. Delegates and guests, please welcome Philadelphia Mayor Michael Nutter. I'm honored to serve as mayor of my hometown, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And when our founders started America with three simple words, we the people, and when they said people, they didn't mean corporations. I'm most honored to be the father of Christian and Olivia and a proud parent of a current high school student. My wife, Lisa, and I know that Olivia's education is central to everything that she and everyone in our city wants to achieve. In Philadelphia, our public education, poverty reduction, health and economic development all start with education. We can't grow the middle class if we don't give our kids the tools they need to innovate and invent. But first, we have to invest in them. That's what President Barack Obama did, saving 400,000 educators' jobs and giving states the flexibility to shape their schools. Mitt Romney doesn't get it. He recently visited a school in West Philly, told teachers that he knows more than they do about what works for their students. He said class size doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? If our teachers can't give our children the attention they need, that doesn't matter. If our students spend the day on their feet or the floor because there aren't enough desks in a crowded classroom, that doesn't matter. Well, let me tell you who it does matter to. It matters to Olivia. It matters to our classmates. It matters to all of our public school students in Philadelphia. And that's what matters. To Mitt Romney, education is a luxury. As governor, he vetoed universal pre-K. In his first year, K-12 schools saw dramatic cuts that led to teacher layoffs. He failed his students. What has he learned from all this? All the wrong lessons. He failed the education test and now wants a promotion. His budget would mean fewer teachers and bigger class sizes. It would mean fewer Pell Grants, costing our country millions of college graduates. And he wants to put big banks back in the student loan business. And just ask him about affording college, like one high schooler did in Ohio. Romney's answer? Shop around. Well, here are some wiser words from a great Philadelphian, Ben Franklin. He said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Sounds like Mitt Romney could stand to learn a thing or two about investing. Our economy grows from the middle out, not the top down. We're all in this together. I learned that lesson growing up in West Philly. When I shoveled the sidewalk, my parents didn't let me stop with our house. They told me to keep shoveling all the way to the corner. I had a responsibility to my community. And that's what being mayor is all about. We take care of our own. We keep our neighbors safe, clear the snow from their streets, educate their kids. We get stuff done. And for Barack Obama, that's what being president is all about. He knows coming together as a nation starts by coming together as neighbors. That's why, after graduating, Barack Obama went to a Chicago neighborhood to help jobless workers in the shadow of a closed-down steel mill. After Mitt Romney graduated, he became a corporate buyout specialist who closed down steel mills. Whose values do you want in the Oval Office? Well, I know who I want. 
And I know who Philly wants. And I know who Pennsylvania wants. And I know who you want. And I know who the middle class needs. President Barack Obama. I could not be prouder of the work that we've done on behalf of the LGBT community. It's no secret that progress has been incredibly difficult. It's about our capacity to love and commit to one another. It's about whether or not we value as a society that love and commitment. It's about our common humanity and our willingness to walk in someone else's shoes. To imagine worrying about a spouse in the hospital with the added fear that you'll have to produce a legal document just to comfort the person you love. To imagine the pain of losing a partner of decades and then discovering that the law treats you like a stranger. We still have a long way to go, uh, but we will get there. My expectation is that when you look back on these years, you will see a time in which we put a stop to discrimination against gays and lesbians. You will see a time in which we as a nation finally recognize relationships between two men or two women as just as real and admirable as relationships between a man and a woman. You will see a nation that's valuing and cherishing these families as, as we build a more perfect union. Where no matter what you look like or where you come from or who you love, you can dream big dreams. Please welcome Zach Walls of Iowa City, Iowa. Thank you, Charlotte. My name is Zach Walls. Thank you. My name is Zach Walls. I'm a sixth generation Iowan, an Eagle Scout, and I was raised by my two moms, Jackie and Terry. Now, people always want to know what it's like having lesbian parents. So I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm awesome at putting the seat down. <laughs> Otherwise, we're like any other family. We eat dinner, we go to church, we have chores. But some people don't see it that way. When I was 12, watching the 2004 Republican convention, I remember politicians talking about protecting marriage from families like mine. Now, supporting a view of marriage as between a man and woman isn't radical. For many people, it's a matter of faith. We respect that. Watching that convention on TV, though, I felt confused, frustrated. Why didn't they think my family was a real family? Governor Romney says he's against same-sex marriage because every child deserves a mother and a father. I think every child deserves a family as loving and committed as mine. Because the sense of family comes from the commitment we make to each other to work through the hard times so we can enjoy the good ones. It comes from the love that binds us. That's what makes a family. Mr. Romney, my family is just as real as yours. President Obama understands that. He supports my mom's marriage. President Obama put his political future on the line to do what was right. Without his leadership, we wouldn't be here. President Obama is fighting for our families. All our families. He has our backs. And ladies and gentlemen, we have his. Thank you, Charlotte, and thank you, President Obama. Fight up, 
Ready to go. Fight up. Ready to go. Fight up. Ready to go. Fight up. Ready to go. I'm Edith S. Childs from Greenwood, South Carolina, and I'm the one that got Barack Obama fired up. So I just want to close with a story that some of you know, because it shows you the importance of one voice. And it's a story about my first trip to Greenwood. When I heard that he was coming to Greenwood, I thought, okay, I'm just going to go and welcome him to Greenwood. Turns out that Greenwood is about an hour and a half from everywhere else. Well, Greenwood is a little bit out of the way. So we drive, we drive, and we drive. Finally, we get to Greenwood. We pull up to a small building. Right here in this building, the Civic Center. It's pouring down rain, and my umbrella blows open, and I get soaked. I'm mad, I'm wet. We go inside, and lo and behold, after an hour and a half drive, Turns out, there are 20 people there. When he first came in the room, he had this grin on his face, like, maybe I'm in the wrong place. You know, it was a small group of people. 20 people, and they all look kind of damp and, and kind of sleepy, like maybe they aren't really excited to be there either. And looking around at everyone in the room, I knew we had to do something. Suddenly, I hear this voice cry out behind me, fire it up, and I'm, I'm shocked. I know that the senator wasn't sure what was going on, because he had that look on his face. So I look behind me, and there's this small woman. Looks like she just came from church. She got a big church hat. And she, she's standing there, and, and she looks at me, and she's smiling, and she says, fire up. Ready to go. I knew we needed to keep saying it. Fired up, ready to go. And so for the next five minutes, she proceeds to do this. Fired up. Everybody says, fired up and ready to go. And everybody says, ready to go. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking, she's stealing my thunder. I look at my staff, they shrug their shoulders. They don't know how long this is going to go. But here, here's the thing, Virginia. After a minute or so, I'm feeling kind of fired up. I'm feeling like I'm ready to go. So I join in the chant. And it feels good. And for the rest of the day, even after we left Greenwood, I'd see my staff. I'd say, are you fired up? They'd say, we're fired up, boss. Are you ready to go? I'd say, I'm ready to go. Once you hear it, you will never forget it. So some, some people start putting fired up, ready to go on their shirts. Some people start putting fired up, ready to go on signs. Everybody's saying fired up and ready to go. Fired up, fired up, ready to go. It shows you what one voice can do. One voice can change a room. And if a voice can change a room, it can change a city. And this is a reflection. Wisconsin, I know cuts that led to teacher layoffs. He failed his You will never forget to commit to vote for Barack Obama today.